On this episode of Locked On Lightning, we're discussing Eric Chernak, how his season went, cheated out of his performance in the playoffs, and looking towards next season. All that more, but first, let's play that music. Your Locked On Lightning, your daily podcast on the Tampa Bay Lightning. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another episode of Locked On Lightning, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Adam Danker. This episode is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Go to birddogs.com slash locked on NHL. And when you enter that promo code locked on NHL, they'll throw in a free custom Bird Dogs Yeti style tumbler with every order. On today's episode, we're discussing or looking back rather at Eric Chernak's season continuing our player reviews uh, special, I guess, if you want to call it that. Uh, we're doing that while, uh, as some of you may know, um, I am stationed up in New York. So a little bit hazy up here, a little bit uh, smoky feeling to this to today's episode. And if you haven't already done so, please go ahead and subscribe to the podcast. Give us a follow wherever podcast are distributed in audio form and subscribe subscribe to our channel we are up to 640 subscriptions and counting once we hit the thousand mark we will be raffling off a vincent lecavier signed puck and you definitely don't want to miss on that i know a lot of people wouldn't so go ahead and do that and tell your friends tell your family so you know the more people you have uh subscribe to the podcast the more chances you'll have even if they don't want it you want it more chances you'll have of possibly winning uh, a Vincent LeCavier signed hockey puck. And so looking at Eric Chernak's season review and kind of rewinding to the beginning of the season, there was a lot of worry surrounding the Tampa Bay uh, line combination, defensive lines, was very suspect going to the season. Uh, they made some moves in the off season to kind of offset um, Jan Ruda leaving for Pittsburgh and trading Ryan McDonough to Nashville to alleviate some of the, the caps strain that was there with his contract. And I think one of the questions that we had on this show, especially, uh, for the defensive core, you know, because like I said, there was a lot of question marks with just all these defensive lines, who was going to be able to slide in here, where was everybody going to be able to fit in and have that long-term success. The the big question was, I think, really, who is going to be able to fill the void that Ryan McDonough left when he was traded away? And we know it wasn't going to be Victor Hedman because Victor Hedman could only do what he does best and, you know, bring a balanced approach. Um, We spoke about that on the Victor Hedman uh, episode that we did when we took a look at his season. If you haven't already done so, please go ahead and take a look at that part at that episode. But I think that we could all agree. And this is just for every hockey team, whether it be in the NHL junior, college, peewee, whatever, we all agree that maybe more so the higher levels, you need a a kind of an anchor on that blue line that is going to be able to play the minutes, the the, the minutes where they just strictly do or or really more so play defensive-minded hockey as what we saw with Ryan McDonough through his – very long tenure here in Tampa Bay. And, you know, we saw shades here and there of Eric Chernak being able to do those things, you know, just being able to control the puck when needed, uh, clear the zone, uh, get in front of shots. We saw that. We saw that the last couple of years. But it's one thing to kind of do that and kind of be the second option defensive blue liner 
Whereas now you're kind of propelled almost or, or really more so f- fall into that role, which I think Chernak really did. And he did a phenomenal job of really from day one doing a good job of just doing all those things that we needed him to do. Now, obviously, we could sit here and I'm sure some of you in the comments, if you haven't already done so on our YouTube channel in this episode, already saying, well, the Lightning defensive core, for the most part, did not play well as a whole. And that's I absolutely agree with you. But if you you know, if you're looking at Eric Chernak, I think that he had a phenomenal season. Uh, Numbers aside, you know, the numbers with defensemen, unless, you know, it's you're having a guy like Hedman or even Sergachev, we could make the case for who I think that would be a great next episode to talk about Mikhail Sergachev. Um, With with Chernak, you can't really you, you I feel like you can't really quantify his performance based off of numbers because I I that's not his game that's not how he rolls you know the only thing I would think that you could look at Eric Chernak in terms of numbers and say well this guy had a very good season was games played plus minus uh blocks and hits i think that those are probably the categories just and and you know i'm not going to get into advanced hockey stats i'm just i'm not going to sit here and to, and per, try to pretend you know that all of that really either matters to me or even i understand you know really the core of all that stuff if you've been listening to my podcast or watching this podcast for a long time you know that I'm more of an eye test guy. You know, I I could look at the the general numbers, look at the eye test, and, and kind of just grab a very good, accurate depiction or description of how that player performed. And like I said, I thought that, and, and really this is probably a better way to sum up Eric Chernak's season, I thought that he was really a big defensive staple for this team. Um, It not always was evident and not always was kind of as dramatic as maybe what we saw from Mac back in the day where the opposing team would be surging and McDonough would block three, four, five shots in a row or whatever that, you know, the number would be maybe two. Um, But Chernak did it. He, 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 he did a very good job of just of being effective while being unassuming. And I and I feel like, you know, we've had this conversation kind of I've spoken about this with past defensemen, especially in the time last year where I was just basically bashing on John Ruta all all season was that there was times where it felt like he disappeared um, where really. He, excuse me, my, my AC was on, um, where he just disappeared and you kind of felt like, you know, almost as if like it was better to hear his name. I felt like it was the complete opposite for Eric Trinac. If you, if you heard his name, usually it probably wasn't something positive. And, and what I mean is extensive extensive talk about him you know if if someone says turn x swings the puck around that's different that's that's commentating but with Chernak, i feel like he just was kind of just this presence on the ice that really we didn't have to acknowledge because usually with a player like that if we're acknowledging him during the game more times than not um, it's just something he didn't do well, which really there was very few times in which that really actually occurred. So very good season from Eric Chernak. I thought that he really stepped up in a big way for this team. I thought that he came up big where a, a, a lightning team that really was really struggling throughout the course of this season defensively to try and figure out how to just find themselves. I feel like every game – whether we were talking about it or just really thinking about it, 
Um, this lightning team was basically just soul searching. Um, and, and, you know, as we go on with these player reviews, especially when we talk about the defensive core, when we talk about Andre Vasilevsky and, and, and Brian Elliott, you know, we could discuss, you know, how big of a factor it was uh, for the defensive core on the goaltenders and vice versa. But like I said, you know, we could we could view Eric Ternak, and, and I think it's fair to do this with every defenseman on this team. We could view every defenseman season as just a singular performance instead of how the core performed as a whole. Um, so if I had to pace, really put a grade on this season, which, you know, I don't mind doing it, but it's not really something that I like to do because I always feel like I'm just inconsistent with it. But if I had to put a season, if I had to put a grade letter on how his season went, I'm going to give him a B plus. You know, he wasn't, I, I think anything above a B plus is now we're talking, you're in the Norris trophy conversation. So let me know in the comments below what you thought about Chernak season. Like I said, phenomenal season, solo performance. Um, very disappointing end to it, though, as what we saw in the playoffs, receiving a dirty hit uh, in game one. And that was pretty much all she wrote for him as he was out for the, the rest of the the series due to, due to concussion uh, protocol and, and all that and restrictions that go along with that. So, you know, we'll talk about that. You know, how could that maybe translate, you know, Really, I hate doing what ifs, but we'll talk about it. We'll talk about how maybe different this this series would have gone. Um, how big of an impact would he have made in this series um, if he stayed in? We'll talk about all that and more. But first, I want to talk about our sponsors on today's show. And then that is our friends over at Bird Dogs. Now, if you haven't heard about Bird Dogs, you got to go take a look, take a feel, buy yourself a pair because these are the best. They make you look good. They make you feel good. And you could wear them for all occasions. I mean, Bird Dogs stretch khaki shorts are designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and leg, giving you a truly sculpted look. Even if you don't have athletic looking legs, these things will make you look like you are a top tier athlete. Bird dog shorts do the exact same thing as Lululemon, but fit way better. So go to birddogs.com slash locked on NHL and enter the promo code locked on NHL for a free Yeti style tumbler with your order. That's birddogs.com slash locked on NHL for a free Yeti style tumbler. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We guarantee it. So once again, I want to thank everybody for making us your first listen of the day. And if you haven't already done so, please go ahead and subscribe to the podcast. Give us a follow wherever podcasts are distributed in audio form. And we are available, of course, on YouTube. So go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit that thumbs up button below this video. Drop a comment below. What do you think about Eric Turnak season? And I think that this is going to be an interesting topic that will probably pop up. In the comments, I'd be almost shocked if it doesn't. If it doesn't, now, as not to reopen old wounds, but I, at the same time, I don't think a lot of Lightning fans, including yours truly, are upset anymore. Or it wasn't as big of a disappointment as maybe we would have thought it was going to be. Uh, the Lightning, of course, losing in the first round to the Toronto Maple Leafs. And a lot of it, a lot of it could be the reasoning for that, for the way the Lightning played. Could be put on the fact that obviously there's a lot of tread on the tire from the last couple of playoff runs. I mean, three straight Stanley Cup finals appearances, back to back Stanley Cup wins in eight months. Um, you know, playing in the bubble, there, there's there's a ton of things that we could talk about, or more so reference. And this team by far has played the most games out of any NHL 
team, I think, in the last four years. So there's that as well. But looking at this series as a whole, and even when the Lightning were down 3-1, I thought for the most part that this team, even when in the games that they lost, I thought that this team always had a shot. But the thing that always was lacking throughout the course of this series was the fact that their defense was you know, let's let's call it what it is. Their defense was garbage. Um, Victor Hedman had an all right series. It, it, it wasn't exactly profound performance from Hedman, or at least the kind of performance that we have come to expect from 77. Darren Radish was a nice surprise, but at the same time, If Eric Chernak doesn't get hurt on a dirty hit in game one from Michael Bunting, you know, Radish most likely doesn't get a shot to play. And, you know, we could take, we could, we, that's, I guess, the, the good thing, the positive that we could take from that negative situation that happened. You know, as everybody said at the time, it was absolutely ridiculous. Uh, It was blatant. 100% 100% agree. I said at the time as well, I was more so on the side of if, and and maybe this is obviously the, the Department of Player Safety just being an absolute joke. Um, they got it right, though. You know, three games, I believe, if I remember correctly, is what Bunting ended up receiving. And, I mean, my thing at the time is, you know, if if you go out and you injure a player and then you get suspended for it, I think that you should be suspended for as long as that player comes back for, for as long as that player is out, excuse me. And obviously that's, you know, something that maybe the, in the next agreement, the PBA agreement, these, these uh, two sides, the union and the league could maybe discuss something differently with that. Who knows? I mean, really it doesn't matter, but, what I'm trying to talk, what I'm trying to say here is that, you know, we're, we're kind of looking at it as to if Chernak doesn't get hurt because we've already established in the first part of this episode, how I think important he was to this team during the regular season. And not only that, how well he was playing down the stretch and how, the lightning were just feeding off his performances. I I really think that, you know, I'm not saying that the lightning would have won the series. I still think at the end of the day, I still think that the Toronto Maple Leafs were just too good of a team. The Toronto Maple Leafs were still very much better than the Tampa Bay Lightning. But I I just feel like when Chernak was in the game, you could kind of take a little bit more risks. And and when I say that risk, I mean defensively, offensively. Uh, You could play more of a 200-foot game. And we didn't really see that from this team um, down the stretch in the playoffs. Uh, After game one, like I said, that was the last game we saw from Chernak. And then... Game two was a nightmare, losing 7-2. And then you lose game three in overtime, game four in overtime, and your back is up against the wall. And, 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 you know, really we could chalk up game five as just a desperation win. But I felt like this team, once he was off the ice for good, just never got comfortable. And that's kind of a positive and a negative thing. You know, more negative being that there are holes that need to be filled uh, in this defensive core. But positive when you're just looking at Eric Chernak, the effect that he has on this team when he's on the ice, 
Um, it, it, it really is not only enduring to Tampa Bay Lightning fans, but it also is encouraging because then you could kind of look back on the regular season as well as the playoffs and kind of just measure that and say, all right, Mac is gone because I, I'm sh- I saw it a lot on Twitter. I saw it here and there in the, in the comments throughout the year on our YouTube page. I felt like there was always kind of, and, and I do it a lot with the, the lightning third line that they had last couple of years. But I feel like we were kind of struggling with the ghost of Ryan McDonough throughout the course of the season. And I don't, think that this team really thought about that, but it was mentioned quite a bit, not only during the regular season in the media, but as well as in the playoffs. And and I think they may not, it may not be at the front of their minds, but I guarantee you subconsciously, especially early on in the season. And then especially after him being out after game one, um, you definitely had that kind of, well, we have nobody else to step up than this guy defensively. We don't have that shut the door kind of guy defensively. And but it is encouraging because the it does show you how far Chernak has come, how much he has developed um in his game in in the the five years that he has been here. Um and the st- just going back real quick to his stats that I didn't really get a chance to look at or really discuss. This is coming off a great year. He's turning 26 in May. So just turned 25 uh, last week. So really great, positive. You have him for the long term. This is the most games he's ever played, which that's another great check mark. Um, And most likely he is going to be on the first. I would prefer to see him on the first line next year with Hedman instead of Perbix. You know, having Perbix on that first line was phenomenal. It was great. Um, But at the end of the day, I I just don't think that, you know, I don't think that that's a long-term positive thing. I'd rather have Perbix on that second line with Sergeyev, which, you know, we could continue to talk about. Uh, at the end of the episode. But uh, before we get into all of that, I want to talk about our last sponsor of the day. And that is our friends over at FanDuel. Now, the Stanley Cup playoffs is still going on. Uh, if you have your money on the Panthers, I'm sorry. <laughs> just absolutely getting just outplayed these first two games. And, you know, unfortunately, all good things have to come to an end. I mean, the Lightning were on the other side of it. Uh, in the Stanley Cup playoffs, uh, the last couple of finals that they won, you know, they ran into teams that were hot. And I bet a lot of people, when when those teams were on those playoff runs, they definitely, definitely were putting a lot of money on it. And they were definitely using our friends at FanDuel Sportsbook. Now, you got to go bet on the NHL Stanley Cup final as well as the NBA final right now because right now new customers can get a no-sweat first bet up to $2,500 that's $2,500 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. There's no better place to bet all the playoff action than America's number one sports book. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and get a no sweat first bet up to $2,500. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Go ahead because it you would definitely definitely throw that money on, on, the, on the Panthers. Or just, you know, cover your bases and put a little bit more money on the Vegas Golden Knights. So once again, no sweat first bet up to $2,500 at FanDuel.com slash locked on. So wrapping things up here on today's episode, talking about Eric Chernak, a I, I think a conversation that will continue to evolve as we move on with next season because really I, I I'm very curious as to where John Cooper is going to put him. I think that Nick Pervix was thrusted onto this, the first line 
with Hedman more so because Hedman wasn't exactly doing things that he normally does. And at the same time, I, I just think that there was a lot of excitement there with Nick Pervix. And I, you know, I think Cooper was just more so hoping that that energy, that enthusiasm that he had, he was hoping that could rub off somehow onto, onto Victor Hedman. But I think next season, opening night especially, I would really, really hope that we have Eric Chernak uh, on the first line because I, I, I think that now you can't mess with the lines. You know, if anyone's going to get moved down, it has to be Hedman. If Hedman doesn't perform, boom, throw him on the second line with Pervix. That's fine. I would more so prefer if you're rolling out your first lines or, or just your line. If I had to make the lines tonight, if opening night was tonight, it would probably have to be Hedman, Chernak, Sergachev, and Pervix. And then that third line, I don't know. That That's a suspect third line. I don't think we're going to see really – it's not going to be anybody from last year that really made a big or, or really played a lot. Um, I don't expect Ian Cole to come back. And I just think that Zach Bogosian is going to be more so of a filler on nights when guys need nights off or matchup issues or, or, or more so, um, you know, injuries or whatever the case may be. Um, that's a whole nother conversation as things continue to evolve over the course of the off season, as guys start to sign or re-sign, we'll talk about that. Uh, but yeah, I would expect more of the same from Chernak. Ideally would like to see him get to that 80 game mark or at least close to it. So maybe 75, 79 games, I think is a good happy medium. I don't think he's going to play a full 82 just because of, now of the role that he is in and the really the 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 type of role that he's going to be in he's going to get banged up more times than we would like him to but if he's getting hurt most likely he's doing his job unfortunately that's just the way it is as a double-sided sword um so let me know in the comments below what you think about that you know like i said with charnak really not concerned too much with a lot of the stats. I mean, if he gets his points here and there, that's phenomenal. But at the end of the day, his job is to play defense and to act as a shutdown defenseman uh, for the Lightning and and help out uh, them in their own zone, especially and cut down on turnovers and all that stuff. So uh, hopefully, and and I would expect he would continue that um, that that performance into next season. So uh, join us in future episodes as we continue our off-season player reviews. Um, we're going to be on the next episode talking about Mikhail Sergachev. Um, really interesting topic to talk about. I Phenomenal season from Sergei. Uh, definitely really looking forward into unpacking his season. Um, and, yeah, in the meantime, subscribe to the podcast. Give us a follow wherever podcasts are distributed. And in – in the meantime, that's been it for this episode of Locked On Lightning, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Adam Danker. I'll talk to you.